In this video, we will discuss about humerus of ox. We will also discuss species difference in horse, dog, pig and fowl. Humerus of ox. So, type. It is a long bone. Position. It is placed obliquely downward and backward between the shoulder joint above and elbow joint below. So, here you can see, this is the humerus bone. Okay, it is present what? It is present obliquely downward and backward direction between shoulder joint above, elbow joint below. Humerus consists of proximal extremity, sept and distal extremity. Proximal extremity consists of one head, neck, two tuberosities, intertuberal group also called as bicipital group. First, head. Head is the circular articular surface. You can see. This is the circular articular surface articulating with the glenoid cavity of the scapula to form shoulder joint. Then neck. Okay. Neck is the narrow constricted part below the head. You can see this is the neck. It is the narrow constricted part below the head. Then you will find two tuberosity you will find. Lateral tuberosity and medial tuberosity. First, lateral tuberosity. Okay. If you see the lateral tuberosity, it is very large and prominent as compared to the medial one it has two parts anterior summit so this is the anterior summit you can see a pointed peak part it is called anterior summit and you will find a posterior convexity you will find so first you see anterior summit so you can see this is the anterior summit okay it arches medially slightly arched medially overhangs bicipital group so it is the bicipital group okay it is present or overhangs above the bicipital group, the summit. It gives attachment to the lateral tendon of infraspinatus muscle. A circular rough area present below and lateral to summit. So you can see it is a circular rough area. Okay. It is present below and lateral to summit. It gives origin to the lateral tendon of infraspinatus muscle. Next. Posterior convexity of the lateral tuberosity. So you can see. So this one is the convexity. Okay. It gives attachment medially to medial tendon of infraspinatus muscle. Then medial tuberosity. It is smaller, has anterior and posterior parts. So first we will discuss the anterior part. Okay. So you can see this is the anterior part of the medial tuberosity. Okay. It forms medial boundary of the bicipital group so this is the bicipital group and this is the medial boundary okay it is formed by anterior part of the medial tuberosity it gives attachment to the supraspinatus the medial tendon and the deep pectoral muscles posterior part it gives attachment to the subscapularis so this is the uh, posterior part of the medial tuberosity it gives attachment to subscapularis muscle then Bicipital group. It lies or present between anterior division of two tuberosity. Okay, you can find this is the bicipital group covered in life by fibrocartilage for the passage of tendon of bicep brachii muscle. Means uh, through this bicipital group, the tendon of biceps brachii muscle will pass. Then sept. The so, sept is cylindrical, twisted in appearance with the four surfaces. Anterior surface, posterior, lateral and medial. We will discuss one by one. First, anterior surface. It is somewhat triangular. Okay. Wide and smooth above. Rough and narrow below. Next, posterior surface. You can see this is the posterior surface. Round and smooth. Blends with the medial and lateral surfaces. A very important part. It bears a nutrient foramen around the middle or distal third of the surface you can see this is the nutrient foramen then medial surface nearly straight in length shows terrace tubercle you can find here terrace tubercle above its middle or at middle for injection of latissimus dorsi muscle and terrace major muscle very very important point terrace tubercle then lateral surface it is smooth spirally curved forming the musculospiral group okay you can see this is the musculospiral group it lodges brachialis muscle 
then very important crest of humerus a prominent border which separates lateral from the anterior surface okay so you can find here this one this is the crest of the humerus so this is the lateral surface and this is the anterior surface so between these two surface you will find crest of humerus bears above its middle the deltoid tuberosity so you can find clearly here deltoid tuberosity very very important this deltoid tuberosity is for the injection of deltoidus muscle crest of humerus you can see crest of humerus it is for injection of brachiocephalicus muscle and superficial pectoral muscles distal extremity of the bone it is articular and expanded it consists of lateral and medial condyles lateral and medial epicondyles olecranon fossa radial or coronoid fossa distal extremity if you see the articular surface it is oblique okay and divided by ridge into two condyles medial and lateral so this one is the distal articular surface of the humerus okay so this is a ridge this is a ridge it separates this end into two condyles so this one is the medial condyle larger we'll discuss and this one is the lateral condyle smaller first medial condyle so you can see so this one is the medial condyle okay it is also called trochlea larger one as compared to the lateral condyle very important point it is crossed by a group extending into radial fossa cranially and olecranon fossa caudal so you see so this total is the your medial condyle and here you can find a groove okay the groove will what extend cranially into the coronoid fossa on the back side the groove also extends into the olecranon fossa then lateral condyle also called capitulum means this one okay so this is the lateral condyle also called capitulum small present further distally and caudally then coronoid or radial fossa it is present above the articular area at the anterior aspect of the distal end okay so you can find this large area this is the coronoid or radial fossa it receives the coronoid process of the radius during flexion movement then olecranon fossa you can see so this one is the olecranon fossa deep located at the posterior aspect of the distal end between the two epicondyles receives anconeous process of alla in full extension its margin means this margin okay so this margin give origin to anconeous muscle then epicondyles epicondyles are thick ridges behind and above the condyles the first medial epicondyle so you can see this is the medial epicondyle a more prominent it is the origin for flexor muscles of carpus and digits then lateral epicondyle gives origin to the extensor carpi radialis muscle next we will discuss species difference first humerus of the horse so deltoid tuberosity is very prominent in horse then very important you will find the bicipital groove is further divided by intermediate ridge you can compare so this is the bicipital groove in case of ox here you will not find any intermediate or additional ridge but here what happen you will find one intermediate ridge muscular spiral groove is more deep and twisted in horse summit not ridged and does not overhangs above the bicipital groove so this is the summit you can compare in ox and in case of horse so in horse summit not ridged and does not overhang the bicipital groove then so this is the coronoid fossa and this is the olecranon fossa in horse so they are cellular nutrient foramen you will find at the distal third of the medial surface then humerus of dog bone long and twisted head rounded and more convex this point is very very important in case of dog the coronoid and the olecranon fossa communicate with each other through supratrochlear foramen so in case of dog you will find supratrochlear foramen very very important the deltoid tuberosity is in the form of a low ridge muscular spiral groove not prominent in dog humerus of pig it has the appearance of italic letter f minus the cross bar means uh, if you write the italic letter f okay but from that you remo remove this bar straight line and the remaining part is the shape of the humerus in case of pig actually you can see this one muscular spiral groove is shallow 
The condyles are of equal size. Deltoid tuberosity is small. Perished tubercle you will not find here. Occasionally, the supratrochlear foramen is found in pig. You can see supratrochlear foramen you will find similar to dog. Coronoid fossa is prominent in pig. Polycrinan fossa is narrow and deep in case of pig. Humerus of fowl. The body is less twisted. The bone is directed parallel to thoracic vertebrae when the wing is at rest. You can see in the resting condition of wing, you can see. So, this is the backbone. So, these are the two humerus. Okay. They are almost parallel to the backbone. Then, proximally, this bone articulates with the scapula and coracoid. You can see. So, this is the humerus. So, proximally, it articulates with the scapula bone and this is the coracoid bone. Head is oval in form. This point is very, very important. You will find pneumatic fossa, okay, which is present medially below the head. So, this is the head. So, below this medially, you will find a pneumatic fossa. Inside the pneumatic fossa, you will find two to three pneumatic foramina, which leads into the air cavity inside the sept. Means, inside the sept, air cavity is present, okay. And for that foramina, here you will find, inside this, you will find two to three pneumatic foramina. 